Just as Marshall called me to his home on March 3rd, 1835. At first, I thought he wanted to scold me for a series of articles I had written accusing him of abusing the power of the Supreme Court. He's up here. Please don't be too long. Justice Marshall? Justice Marshall. Oh, I'm glad you came. Sit down. Young man, how old are you? 35. That explains everything. You have no sense of history. Your conclusions about the Marbury case are just plain wrong. You make it sound like I should be arrested for treason. Now, let me tell you something, boy. Our nation was almost destroyed during the Revolutionary War. We nearly died at Valley Forge. Not because of the British, but because our states would not give us the food, the weapons, nor even the soldiers we needed. It was obvious to Washington and myself that a nation the size of ours could only survive with a strong central government. But when you heard the Marlborough case, our government was strong. Yes, the government was strong, but the Supreme Court was weak. At that time, it decided very few cases of significance. Why, the only reason I became Chief Justice is because John Jay resigned. I resigned from the court in order to become governor of New York. I was perfectly convinced that the court would never obtain the energy, weight, and dignity which are essential to its affording due support to the national government. So the only reason why you empowered the Supreme Court was because it was weak. No, no, it wasn't the only reason. I was protecting the court from the Republicans. Dear God, don't you understand anything? The turn of the century was a dangerous time for our young republic. With the election of Jefferson's Republicans, we feared that our country was headed for anarchy. Our country is too large to have all its affairs directed by a single government. The general government should be reduced to foreign concerns only, with the states left free to manage for themselves. And Jefferson was a moderate. His fellow Republicans had harsh plans. What is needed is an absolute repeal of the whole judiciary system, terminating the present officers, and creating an entirely new system. That was a sure remedy for disaster. That's not what I heard. Well, what did you hear? I heard that the real problem was you Federalists. Your tyrannical Congress passed the Alien Sedition Act, which shut down many opposing newspapers. Then President Adams and other Federalists publicly supported the damned act. And when the public reacted and elected Jefferson president, you Federalists tried to block his election. <laughs> Justice, is this man bothering you? Admit it. You only wish to attack Jefferson in the Mulberry case. It was all politics. No. Listen. I hated that son of a bitch, Jefferson. But I never sunk down to his level to put politics before the Union. You missed that in your articles. The fact is that the Marlboro case was all about politics. No. It was about preserving the Constitution by saving the judiciary. You were attacking Jefferson. Damn it, will you listen to me for a minute and forget about your wrong-headed history? <laughs> In 1801, William Marbury and other Federalists filed a motion with the Supreme Court. They charged that former President Adams had appointed them to the office and that Jefferson was illegally withholding their commissions. They wanted the Supreme Court to issue an order to Jefferson compelling him to deliver their commissions. I have agreed to hear Marbury's case and he will receive a full hearing on the fourth day of the next term. 
That's not how the case began. As President Adams, Secretary of State, you were the one who sealed those commissions only the night before the inauguration. It was you who failed to send the commissions out, and you who let them fall into the hands of Jefferson. And then you have the audacity to sit on the Supreme Court and preside over a case for which you were responsible for starting. It wasn't Marlbear who was attacking Jefferson. It was you. I was only protecting the spirit of the law. I did no wrong. <laughs> but those Republicans were out to destroy me. They tried everything delaying the next session of court, impeaching Judge Pickering. Why, if they had had enough votes, they would have even impeached me. So you took matter into your own hands and took action no, against- No, God damn it! I was strictly following what was set out in the Constitution. But it seemed as though I was trapped. Either ruling was going to destroy the judiciary and the Constitution. It was clear that I could never order Madison to deliver the commissions as Jefferson would tell them to ignore the order. Then the court would have been humiliated by the president. The Judiciary Act of 1789. However, I came up with a brilliant idea. In my opinion, I agreed that Marbury's commission was illegally withheld. But I stated that the Supreme Court was not able to help Marbury because it did not have the power. It was true that an act of Congress gave the court the power to issue writs to the executive. But I found that this act contradicted the Constitution. By protecting the Constitution, I was able to criticize Jefferson while at the same time invalidating an act of Congress. The Constitution is either a superior paramount law unchangeable by ordinary means, or it is on a level with ordinary legislative acts, alterable when the legislature shall please to alter it. It is emphatically the province and duty of the judicial department to say what the law is. This is the very essence of judicial duty. That day was the Supreme Court's Declaration of Independence. Is that how you wish to be remembered, as the man who made the court supreme? I would like to look down from heaven, 100 years from now, and see next to my name in the history book, the words, protector of the Constitution.